friends, to the first ever episode of Arbor Creek's Battle Supreme. I am one of your hosts, Alex Ford. Frank Dvorak. Uh, David Drilling over here. Larry. If you end up enjoying this pilot episode, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and a rating review. It would help us a lot. Um, If you like our band, you can check us out on Facebook. That's Arbor Creek. Oh, that's facebook.com slash Arbor Creek the Band. Our website is arborcreektheband.com. Um, Instagram is at Arbor Creek. And we don't really mess around with Twitter too much, so you can just look it up yourself. Yeah. All right, Dave, you want to give us the rules? All right. So for the Battle Supreme, we are putting two bands up against each other, and it's going to be a mixture of our opinions and a little bit of statistics and numbers. And uh, really the whole goal is just have a good discussion about awesome rock bands that we all love and know. And uh, we're going to tell you who we think, in our opinion, is the better band. And today we're going to be doing Led Zeppelin versus Queen. And uh, I I created a point system here. I'm going to try to explain the best I can. So there's going to be one... There's going to be a round of questions with one point, some questions with two points, questions with three points, and then a bonus round, which will be whatever the person decides when it comes to the points. And uh, there's about five questions for one and two points, and there's only two questions in the three-point category, and the bonus will be whatever everybody comes up with. So that's the gist of the point layout. I'll be keeping track as we go through. And uh, I think that's about it. I think that's uh, the gist of it. Is everybody ready to get it started here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> A little rocky intro. All right. So in the one-point category round, we're going to start off with the vocals of both bands. So Zeppelin's vocals and Queen's vocals which vocals is not only considering the lead singer, but people singing or harmonies on the albums, just overall in general vocals. So we're going to decide who gets the one point for the better vocals. And I uh, started off with Larry. Tell us what, you, what, you, what you're feeling. Uh, I would probably go Queen. I would probably go Queen just because Freddie Mercury was like trained in opera and as far as like old time singing and different ways I don't know I'd have to go queen Freddie although good. like opera rock was really wasn't really a thing before Freddie Mercury so but blues rock was definitely a thing before Robert Plant and That's like fair. not to say that Robert Plant's I love Robert Plant you know I'm not even going to go into that but <clears throat> you're about to yeah yeah exactly but yeah. wait <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll just stick with Freddie Mercury and Queen. Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. Yeah, Queen. All right, that sounds good. I can I can agree with with that. Al. So, if we're going objectively, I would go with Freddie Mercury for the fact that he's totally classically trained and he had such a range so if we're talking about like technically the better singer i would go freddie mercury however robert plant speaks to me more and you know i'm definitely more into the blues heavy rock stuff so if we are going down now would you call this more for opinion or these are all opinion what you think is the better vocals overall from each band. And now you also talked about uh, overall vocals. I mean, yes. if you listen to all the Queen stuff, the background vocals, that's a whole production. You can hear everything so well in every song. Oh, yeah. And in Zeppelin songs, if there's background vocals, it's usually just Robert Plant underneath, and they definitely... I mean, there's a few songs when they have some like big swelling harmonies, but if you're going better, I would give the edge to freddie mercury on this one that's my final answer and i'm sticking to it all right frank 
So the way I look at it is longevity. Freddie Mercury just had a better voice for longer than Robert Plant did. Yes, it's true. That's it's why true. I look at it, you know. If you take a 10-year span of when the band started, after those 10 years, Freddie Mercury just had a more sustainable voice. I mean, Robert Plant did go really hard, and that's, you know, yeah. right? you, when, you, when you're sick and you're <laughs> touring, you're smoking cigarettes, taking drugs. Back in the a, day. It takes a toll on you. Well, he still sings. The, yeah, he still sings. But yeah, now he's right. like an old, dusty cowboy. Yeah, he doesn't have the range he used to, though, no. you know. But he still yeah. has a great voice, and he can put on a show. We saw him in Bonnaroo, Robert yeah. Plant, the one year, 2015. It was awesome. And yeah, Frank, and at the Riviera with Frank. Yeah. Sidebar, wasn't Presence done in a wheelchair? Did he get an accident He was in a something? wheelchair. He got into a car accident. Yeah, I was going to put that in a bonus round thing. <laughs> oh, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. But, um... Yeah, I so, so I'm going Freddie Mercury. I think I think Freddie Freddie and Queen win the vocals on this one, which I think is fair. Um, my opinion, I love both bands and the vocals a lot, and I think what it really comes down to for me is just that Queen really went crazy with the vocal harmonies and the execution of everything, and Freddie's range and voice is just insane four octaves it's it's crazy and robert plant is amazing and i love him and he's great but i just feel like in this situation you just gotta go with freddie so one point going to queen and then we're gonna move on to the next question which is going to be guitar and for most situations we're gonna do just one lead guitar player the main guitar player of the band because the way we have this set up, we're just going to do the main instruments and the main players, and some stuff is going to get left out, and we're sorry about that, but that's just how this is going to work. So we're going to do lead guitar. So we're looking at Paige and Brian May, two legendary guitar players. Alex, you can start this one. So first off, they're two totally different players, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I know Paige gets, I mean, somewhat some flack sometimes of being like, I guess, quote unquote, sloppy or something. To me, that's totally a part of his style and charm. And like what he does on the guitar, in my opinion, is unmatched. Now, Brian May's definitely a cleaner guitar player, definitely more punctual with all his notes, and you can hear everything more slick and smoothly. Um, but not that Brian May isn't original, because you can definitely tell when he plays the guitar that it's him, Yeah. but Jimmy Page is a freaking wizard, so, <laughs> and he's literally the brains behind the whole band, Led Zeppelin, and it's definitely his thing, so I'm going Jimmy Page 100%. All right. Final answer? James Patrick Page. <laughs> All right. That was one vote. For the zap. Frank, you want to go next? Sure. So, yeah, like Al was saying, both amazing guitar players. But, yeah, I mean, Paige is just the guy. What gives him the, the cutting edge, though, is he is a producer. He produces his own sound. So he can create whatever he wants. Yeah, Paige. All right. Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> Cool, cool. It's looking like uh, Paige has the uh, upper hand here. Larry, what do you got to say about the two? I mean, are we going to be a dead horse here? <laughs> Jimmy Page. I mean, I just got to go Jimmy Page. I mean, it's no disrespect to Brian May. I think he's a good guitar player, but I don't think of Queen as a guitar band. I think of Queen as like a vocal band. I think of Led Zeppelin as a guitar band yeah. with vocals, too. It's like neck and neck, but mm -hmm. it's like a guitar band. You think about the guitar riffs. When you think about Queen, personally, and I feel where most people, you think about them, uh, you know, la, 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 that, you know, you know how it is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to go Jimmy Page. All right. Well, Zeppelin's going to take the point in this round. And uh, – I would like to say that I agree with everything everybody else said. Now, Brian May is a great guitar player, and I, what I think should be appreciated about him is that 
the fact that he isn't the mastermind behind the songs and the music, what he did decide to play for songs is really good. And sometimes that is also a difficult thing to do because he does have a lot, a lot of legendary guitar parts and solos and melodies, and he does kill that. But he also, from what I've seen live, doesn't do much improvising and soloing the way that Paige can, and Paige is a little bit ridiculous <laughs> with how good he can just kind of go off on the guitar and take the band other places and stuff. And as Larry was saying... When you think of Zeppelin, you think of guitar riffs. You think of heavy guitar riffs, and that is all Page. Like, all the great songs, you can literally sing the riffs. And I just, you don't get that as much with Queen. So, I, yeah, I'm with you guys on that. I think. And that's no disrespect to Brian May. Yeah, not at all. We're, you know, I just we, don't think of him in that light. Yeah, He's a great we're, you player. Know, we're nitpicking but, here. That's the whole yeah. point of the battle, right. you know. It's a battle. We respect everyone we're going to be talking about in this podcast. There is no hatred at the end of the day, we're just getting down to the nitty gritty and really analyzing it and giving our opinions and stuff. So that is the guitar round. And uh, next up, we're going to be doing the bass guitar. So you're going to have John Paul Jones and John Deacon head to head. Frank, <laughs> you going to start this one. John versus John, huh? Johnny's. The thing is... John Paul Jones is just the quintessential classic rock and roll bass player. He always is in the right spot at the right time. He never misses a beat. And he's just the secret weapon of Zeppelin because he can play keyboards and mandolin and guitar and harpsichord and anything and everything you can think of that guy can do, let alone just the bass. Yep. So, yeah, my point goes to JPJ. All right. That's one for the Zep. And uh, I totally agree. He's uh, really talented in all aspects, and he's still making music today, yeah, yeah. which is cool. He made an opera. Yeah. Very, Full-fledged opera. Very talented music mind. Larry, what you got on the bass? Hold on. Give me a minute. He's thinking. Needs a little time to think. Yeah, I mean, I don't even want to be like this asshole, but I didn't even know the bass player in Queen's band like before, you know, a couple of weeks ago, like looking into him more so. Like, and I think that he's good on time. Like, I'm not, you know. Yeah. But there's just there's not as much groove in, in my opinion. That's like my, you know. It's less soul. Yeah, it's yeah. There's not as much groove. Like, he's a good player, or whatever. But John Paul Jones is just, he's my favorite bass player. He's my favorite bass player of all time. So I feel like that's not even fair. I mean, that says it right there. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Yeah. But yeah, John Paul Jones all the way. All right. Alex, what you got on the bass players for us? So first off, they're both world class players. We can all agree on that. Yes. And 100%. actually, like, delving into both of their styles um, to compare and contrast a little bit, and this is just a generalization, but I actually, like, kind of studied both of their playing, and it seems like John Deacon has more of that, um, I don't want to get too, like, technical, but it like a staccato style. So anyone who doesn't know what that means, it's like there's more room between the notes, and it's just a tighter way of playing. Um, so, like, a thing for that would be like another one bites dust you know bow 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 really tighten in the pocket and also like songs like you're my best friend it's like if you actually really listen to the song underneath it all he's probably playing the most in the whole song super melodic but you would almost never know it because it's just he's on it they're just like galloping through the whole song yes and uh in contrast to jpj he has more of that uh, legato style, which is the opposite. It has a lot of flowing notes, like what is and what should never be, ramble on, all those things. Four sticks. Four sticks, friends. Like all the notes kind of go into each other. That's not to say each of them don't do that, but generally I would say that was more of their styles, at least from what I picked apart from it. Um, 
for my decision, dun, dun, dun. I'm going to be completely biased because JPJ is <laughs> I mean, it's top hard. three bass players of all time and one of the reasons why I even played the bass guitar. So I'm going him all the way. But I appreciate John Deacon more than I ever have before after kind of diving in this thing we're doing. So I'm definitely going to listen a lot more Queen after this. Awesome. Really like how you went in on that. That was really nice. And, um, yeah, I think they're both great. <clears throat> I think it's cool to hear Deacon play bass with a band that has such a unique song style. And, like, they do rock, but, like, you know, Obviously, what sets them apart is the whole um, operatic style and how you could say it's like almost classical, progressive kind of thing in the songs. And it's hard to play to stuff like that. It's hard to write to stuff like that. And I think that's a big theme here with their band is that it takes a lot of really good musicians to put together pieces of music like that. It's not just something you just jam on you know these are it's all thought out yeah you know? so you got to give a lot of credit to these people for that we are not dissing it but in our bias opinion we are all about that soul and the rock and roll we just feel that uh zepp's given a little bit more of it here so far they're in the lead next up we're gonna be talking about the drums the good old skins but i'm we're going to start with Larry Huff for the drums. I have a feeling I know what your answer is going to be, <laughs> but let's get it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with John Bonham and Led Zeppelin. Never heard of him. <laughs> He's <Who>? pretty good. <laughs> Who? He's pretty good. The drummer from Queen, Queen is good, too. Yes. But, again, I just don't think of the rhythm I just don't think of them as, the, as like a rhythmic band like in general they're like with the opera it's like very it's just like different. theatrical it's just like yeah theatrical there so it's just it's just what it is yeah John John Bonham final answer final answer John Bonham all right one for the Bonham Al what do you got now, I am not disparaging Roger Taylor in any way, but out of everybody, this was probably kind of the this was the easiest decision for me to mm -hmm. make. Um, I'm definitely gonna go with John Bonham on this one. Overall, like what he brought to the game is just unmatched. And like everyone said, it's like Queen, and what's so great great about Queen is like it's I don't know, it's. I wouldn't call them like a whole unit, but everything is supposed like just goes together so well. And in Zeppelin, like each of the players are just so highlighted. And pushing away from each other. Yeah. And even going down to like the sheer drum sound, like even like if we're talking about recording quality and oh, stuff, yeah. like the drums in Queen, and this is also reminiscent of the times, which what makes Zeppelin such a game changer in their production value was that back in the day, you know, people like Motown and, you know, Chess Records and all that stuff and the big band jazz, they really utilized the room sounds and stuff. And a lot of that got lost in the 70s. They went more with, like, the dead rooms and they add the reverb. The one thing I'll say about Roger Taylor, I love how the toms sound. They sound super thunderous. Like, they're really high up there in, in like, the mix. Um, I would say I enjoy the recording quality of both bands and the production pretty much. Like, they're, they're both good. I don't have many complaints on that. Yeah, they're both good in their own way. You can hear everything so clearly. But, like, just listening to the drums itself, it's just, like, for the time, John Bonham's drums were just so thunderous and no one else sounded like him or played like him. And he just had a feel. And he was the sound. He was, yeah, he was a big part of the band. And, like, no one will ever be able to replicate that ever again, even if they tried, in my opinion. So I'm going John Bonham. Sorry, that was long-winded. No, that's fine. That's what, that's what we're here for, you know? All right. Well, Frank, what do you got on the drummers? Okay, so you got to look at it like this. 
if you were to pick 10 famous drummers out of a hat, random, and ask each of those 10 drummers, name their top three drummers, I can guarantee you at least 90% of them will put John Bonham in their top three, if not number one. Yeah. He was just the guy. He invented the style of which everyone yeah. still continues to play. This is true. You know? That's very, just, very that's, impactful. It, it is what it is. You know, I, I don't make the rules. <laughs> I just follow them. <laughs> yeah, and no, I totally agree with know? that. I mean, and if I'm anyone knows of... me, I just love, you know, he's my favorite drummer. Yeah, yeah this is all bias, I feel, because I we all love Led Zeppelin so yeah, much. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's, that's the point. But Queen We're is, still having Queen a great conversation yeah. about these too. bands. It's only the first round. Yeah. This is going to get, it's going to get more intense as we go on and different episodes and different artists, but. We figure we start with, with our favorite band, you know, get it out the way. It's easy. <laughs> and later on, when after we get this show running, uh, we're definitely going to be posting polls and whatnot to get you guys involved on our social media so you guys can vote on it too. Definitely. You want to hear everyone's opinion. Yeah, because everybody's got a good point of view. We want to hear what everyone has to say about uh, all the bands. All the I artists. don't want to hear it. Larry doesn't care, but I, I'll, I'll listen to you. I got you. We're all so, ears, baby. So, yeah, <clears throat> final answer. <laughs> John Bottom. <laughs> Zep, <laughs> Zep takes the lead, or keeps the lead, I should say, with that one. Um, the next question is going to be our last one-point question, and it's going to be who had the better debut album. So we're talking Led Zeppelin 1 and Queen, their first album. Yeah. So my biggest thing, like when I think about debut albums, I always think like instantly about the first song. And I always try to re- imagine myself as an 11 year old kid at that time, whether it, I believe Queen was 72 and Zeppelin was 69. Um, like if I put up, you know, keep yourself alive versus good times, bad times, it's like good times, bad times is such a, a banger is. that. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the days of my youth, I was told what it means to be a man. Boom. Uncanny. So, and for me, Queen, well, I believe the second album had Killer Queen on it, but yeah, I feel like I might be ignorant on this, but if we're talking about, like, Breakout, you know, I feel like Zeppelin 1 was more impactful and had more standout songs. That's not to say that Queen wasn't a Billboard top, you know, success later on in the career. Yeah, but we're talking uh, debut, though. Yeah, debut album, 100% Zeppelin 1. All right. Larry? I have to agree with everything Alex said. All right. Entirely. And I think, Al, to correct you, I think Killer Queen was on his third album. I think you're right, actually. On uh, Sheer, uh, whatever. Uh, sheer something. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I can't even, I can't disagree with anything Al said. You know, I don't want to add too much salt to it. I'm just, I agree with Alex. Yeah, and, throw some uh, seasoning on it, man. You know, <laughs> Lowry's. I mean, you can talk about the first Zeppelin album if you'd like. It doesn't have to just be your decision. You yeah, know? okay, well, Led Zeppelin's first album to me was just more groundbreaking. I never really got into Queen so much listening to it by, you know, just, just what I know. And not to discredit the album, I know Keep Yourself Alive was killer for a first opening track. I actually really liked it. Yeah, great song. And I think it I think it's one of their better songs. And it's just, you know But yeah, good times, bad times to me it just like kicks the door down. Like it just shows up, you know, rises to the occasion. The guitar solo just comes in hot, the vocals are on, the drums are loud. And it's like this is Led Zeppelin. And I just feel like that to me was just like I loved it when I first heard it, and yeah, and I just got to stay with Led Zeppelin for best debut album out of the two. All right. Frankie Boy, what's your take on the debuts? So both good debuts. I mean, Queen's debut did have a lot of good songs on it, a lot of stuff that they played live for a lot of years until they released Night at the Opera, which had Bohemian Rhapsody on it, which obviously took them into the fucking stratosphere. But Zeppelin 1, they just changed the game so fast. You know, they released the album, toured the U.S., and by the time they were done touring the U.S., they were famous. Yeah. And they were already in the process of recording Zeppelin 2, you know. 
I think they beat like some Beatles records like at that time, and it was yeah. like a really big deal. Yeah, it was crazy. A lot of speed there. Which should yeah. be noted. That's a huge deal. I think they went on 11 tours in under three years. While they yeah. recorded four albums. Yeah, wasn't didn't the second album take like a long time to record because of the touring or something yeah. like that? Well, they, Multiple they, they studios. recorded in two, two different studios yeah. in the U.S. and then went back to Europe and finished it. Crazy man. And Can't they imagine. are they were all doing studio work prior. I don't know much about Queen's background before, but I know so, the members of Led Zeppelin were already in the scene. All, in the musician scene, so for them the to come Queen together, guys are all educated. If you didn't know that, yeah, no, they I all have like Brian degrees. Mays of, uh, yeah, well, physicist. Yeah, they all are very smart, have degrees, he and wrote a book. They somehow <laughs> ended up playing in a rock band, which <laughs> to me is amazing. It's awesome and it's cool, but it's just the last thing you think of, especially back then. You know, yeah. most rock bands back then were high school dropouts or just you know like regular dudes just working jobs, trying to make it and stuff. But uh, Queen is a they're all very educated. Freddie was like an art art student, I believe, and I'm pretty sure he did a lot of like he was into like digital art and like stuff like that. He actually drew the Queen logo with the what's it called? The two like ah, you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't describe it. The Queen uh, logo with the little Queen hat. You'll see. You'll queen see. Crown or whatever. Yeah, th- this one. This one. Oh, he drew that? Yeah, he des- well, he designed it. Oh, damn. Oh. Their main, like... Decent. Yeah. So, and it has to do with their, like, zodiac signs. Like, the two things are because the two members are the same. And all, all oh, that. yeah? Yeah, so, like, he's a very visual artist person, too, which is super cool. Anyway, a little off topic, but we're just getting to that background. I did know that about uh, Brian May. I just yeah. slept on it, and I was like, oh, yeah. I think one of them was a biologist. One of them... I think went to like dentist school or something too. <laughs> yeah, they're all yeah. It was crazy. They had backup plans. Yeah, they really <laughs> did. Didn't need them, but yeah. Well, that would explain why their first album didn't pop like that. Yeah, yeah true. You Could know? be. Because they're you know they had they were already rolling like like Led Zeppelin was already in the scene making music like they are they were already like getting together and on, ready to on go. albums prior like members of their yeah. band. So, yeah, looks like Zeppelin's going to take the debut point. Again, this was our last round of one-point questions. So we're moving on to some two-point questions. It's going to get a little bit more weighted here, and we're going to bring in some uh, some numbers and some facts just to make it interesting, you know? Um, dun, dun, dun. So our first two-point question is going to be which band was more – original stylistically and so the way i'm looking at this is which band really stands out from the other and you can't necessarily put them in categories with other bands you know and also look at influences and stuff like that and if you feel that you know like maybe one has a lot of influences that could be the same as a lot of other artists. Maybe that could be a factor here too, but just overall originality in their style and sound. And uh, yeah, I want to have uh, Al start this one. So, first off, this is definitely probably the hardest question like of the whole podcast because they're both so original. You know, and no one else sounds like them. It's actually really hard to put both of them in a category. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, to be honest, I'm going to give the edge to Queen on this one. And the reason being is, like, they definitely created that whole operatic, like, style, of, you know, the opera rock thing. And anyone that came after them, you could tell they were influenced by Queen, but you not necessarily can hear another band that sounded like queen before i do hear a lot of like they sound very i don't know like british i guess like some of those songs have like the marching thing going for them like you hear in some beatles songs and when i hear zeppelin it's like besides their folk folky stuff like they sound like you hear a lot of american blues and rock and roll like they're a rock and roll band definitely and so i'm giving Queen the edge for that reason, and also 
not that I believe this, but a lot of people give Zeppelin flack for the early album because, like, they say, like, they quote-unquote ripped off or covered some songs. Like, to me, if you say that, you just don't understand the blues because all blues people do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's besides the point. But for overall originality, Queen definitely made their own thing. So, yeah, I'm going Queen. Final answer. All right. That's a good assessment. How do you feel about this one, Larry? He's thinking. It's close. It is close, but I think I would have to go with Queen, too, just because, like, I feel like Queen broke through. It's, like, it's further than rock music. It's just, like, pop music, like, extreme popular music. Like, and Led Zeppelin has songs like that, too, that everybody knows. But Queen is, like, it's different. Like, you really want to sing Freddie Mercury, like, to, like, masses of d- so many different types of people that I feel like Led Zeppelin is, it's just not that size. It's not that size for that. You know what I mean? So, all right. I would have to go with Queen as far as like being original and like having their own sound. That was like the question, right? Yeah, originality. Yeah, originality. I mean, because you could think of Led Zeppelin, like you already said, blues rock. There's a lot of other blues rock bands. Granted, Zeppelin did so much more than that. And yeah. they did, t- and that's what makes it really, cl- you know, hard and close because they did so many different things too that nobody really has done. But I would have to go with Queen, close, but Queen. All right. Final answer, Queen. Sounds good to me. Frank, what are you thinking on the originality? So this is tough because I thought of it a few different ways. So like first, you get Brian May's guitar sound. The way he, when he plays, you always hear like a second harmony or a third harmony, Mm -hmm. all on the same riff. Now, whether it's a pedal or a studio trick or whatever it was, very original. Definitely didn't hear anything like that before or even after. Like, he sealed his tone, like, in humanity. Very distinct. Yeah, he had his thing. But then going back to what Al said about Zeppelin with the blues bands, now, before Zeppelin, there was blues bands. Yeah. But then after Zeppelin, there was blues bands that sounded like Zeppelin. This is true. So it is tough. It is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go. I'm going to go with Zeppelin on this right. one. Ride it all the way out. Because, so like when you, get to, when you get to Presence, even before, like there was the whole 80s guitar, 80s song style, recording styles. They were doing some of that stuff on that album that came out in 76. Then when you get to Into the Outdoor, 79, same thing. There's, like, stuff that you'd hear in Def Leppard or The Scorpions or Whitesnake. You'd hear all these different things that Zeppelin was already doing, the 80s rock thing, in the 70s. Yeah, that's a fair, so i got to give it to Zeppelin. It's a fair assessment. Yeah, they were really always kind of ahead of everyone else, like almost yeah. foreshadowing what's coming <laughs> yep. later. Yes. I feel like they took the torch from the Beatles as far as like creativity for the time of yep. music. Yeah. They're always like two years ahead of like albums that came out that sounded like the albums that Zeppelin put out like yep. two to five years before. It's crazy. They were just creating. Yeah. They definitely were. Yeah, it's a really tough question because they are both very original in their own respects. And um, I think that Queen just. You, you you could say they have a more unique, separated sound and style, but that doesn't mean because Zeppelin is a blues rock band that there's, like, more blues rock bands, but the thing is they still are the biggest blues rock, blues band. rock band. So, like, regardless of there might not be as many queens, there might be more in the that realm of music that Zeppelin's in, they were still the best at it and I think the most original at it. So... That's what makes it really tough. It's really hard to decide. Um, But in our discussion here, Queen is going to take the point on originality, and I think this is definitely the closest, like the closest one and the hardest decision so far. So, you know, props to them. Props to them. All right, our next two-point question is going to be the best album between 
what I am deciding as their <laughs> biggest albums or best albums, which could be debated. Yeah. So I'm choosing, and you're dealing with it. That's fine. So <laughs> if you guys or anyone listening yeah. has a problem with it, <clears throat> you can hit me up and tell me to pick better albums, and I won't. <laughs> so deal with it, yeah. Um, so the way I did this, Zeppelin Four is going to be the Zeppelin album. And A Night at the Opera is going to be the Queen album. Because I think that's the two biggest landmark albums in their careers. Definitely. You know, like, I think you could sit here and say one's your favorite or this or that. But when you get down to it, those are the biggest, I think, most impactful albums. So we're going to do this in kind of two ways. <clears throat> First time, we're well, we'll just do it all at once. You guys are going to tell me which one you think is, is better or you prefer more. And I want you to guess which one was more successful because I have some numbers on that. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. And Fair. we're going to go by the numbers for this one. Fair. Sounds yeah. good. Fair enough. All right. So, Zeppelin IV versus A Night at the Opera. Frank, you're going to start this one off. I mean, it's basically Stare to Heaven versus Bohemian Rhapsody, right? So Well, that's going to be the next question. Ah. <laughs> ah. One they step ahead the, of the game. <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. But mouth. yes, essentially. But we're talking overall, you know. Overall, I would give it to Zeppelin. I mean, there's just more popular songs on Zeppelin Four than there is on Night of the Opera. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that. I would agree per- with that. Personally, and I just think just in the crowd you know it's just it's been around people listen to it you have a favorite song off the album could you choose one like a personal Uh, favorite personal favorite it is hard very tough but i think i'm gonna have to choose the title track all right which would be rock and roll fair enough that's a good one. So that's your answer. That's my answer. All right. Larry, what are you feeling on the best album here? Yeah. What Frank said, <laughs> Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, Led Zeppelin. Don't be sorry. I feel like on the radio, you're going to hear more songs on the radio from that album than you are on Queen's album other than Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. So, uh, and that's, that's, just, what that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's just what it this is. This is more songs that you would hear from Zeppelin Ford yeah. than, uh, you know. Yeah. Gotta go Zeppelin. The two or three songs you've off, not at the and, opera. And that's, in my personal opinion, I don't even care about any of that, is would be Led Zeppelin too, or Led Zeppelin also, yeah. because, you know. I understand, yeah. Just, I love it, yeah. As I said, there's no reason to feel apologetic over having a biased opinion because you like something, because that's the whole point of what we're doing. Yeah, don't be sorry. We're dude. telling people how we feel. <laughs> They're getting to know us. We're discussing it. It's all good. Obviously, and, people are going to catch the hint that we're a Zeppelin you know, band like that freaks our it's our favorite band collectively, but you know, and the little bonus question that came out of nowhere is your favorite uh song on the album. Yeah, you have one, man. It's probably a tie between Four Sticks and When the Levee Breaks, but I'm gonna give it to When the Levee Breaks because Robert Plant gives a shout out to Chicago in that song. Yeah, I like that. And the song just stomps all the way through with just a mad guitar riff. Awesome, <laughs> all right. And no. a harmonica solo. Oh, are you done? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. No. I just didn't know. I, One I of the best harmonica like solos of all time, too. We're still getting new to this. I'm this is sorry. our first episode, so Bear we'll get better. Us. We'll get cleaner. We promise. You know. Anyway, Alex, what is your take on the two albums? First of all, let me say, Larry, put a lid on it, huh? <laughs> I'm just it's, saying, you know. It's Big A's time. Go for it. Torch is yours. Oh God. So. My favorite album of the two. Yeah. And. Favorite song off that album. And favorite song on the album. Oh, for sure, Zeppelin IV. Now, I think one song, Bohemian Rhapsody, like, is one of the most impactful songs of all time. But if you're going down to the whole album, one, Zeppelin IV has Stairway to Heaven, which is just, like, enough said there. But, yeah, there's just definitely more there in the whole album. When I think of. Queen versus Zeppelin. Queen 
and there's a lot of bands like this. They have a lot of good albums, and then there's like two to three like really strong singles where Zeppelin is an album band. Like they're they're just great all the way through. So yeah, I'm picking Zeppelin four, and my favorite song off of Zeppelin four, which is hard to choose from, but honestly, I would go with Misty Mountain Hop. That's mine too. Because it's a great song, dude. It's such a good feeling song, and I always just reminds me of driving on a summer yeah. day when that comes on the radio. I'm like, fuck yeah. yes. Every and time, uh, blast it, anybody, it anybody who's been anywhere with me, including you guys, know I love to take over the jukebox <laughs> at restaurants and bars if they got the touch tunes, and that's always my go-to first song because it just kicks major ass. Yes. It just gets the energy going. It's rocking. I love the vocal melody because it's so different. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's such a different vocal melody, I feel like, that song. And uh, so, yeah, Misty Mountain House, my favorite as well. you have any other uh, notes on the uh, the album topic here? Or are you? They asked us to stay for tea and have some fun. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. All right, I'm good. Yes, the final answer. <laughs> Whatever that was. All right. So now we're going to do this real quick. Which one? I'm going to go. We're going to start Frank and go this way. Out of those two albums, which one do you think had more sales? Zeppelin 4. Al? Album sales, Zeppelin 4, for sure. Zeppelin 4. All right. And the album with the most sales between the two is Zeppelin 4. 23 million. Damn. <laughs> Ninth Opera. <laughs> That's a big number. And you know, and like I'm 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 taking numbers and it's like when you when you go and look on the internet and get statistics, yeah, you're going to find different stuff everywhere, but I'm trying to find the most realistic, accurate stuff I can. So yeah, that's not even that, that's not <laughs> even stre- that's like, not streaming numbers. Yeah, like no, this is streaming. just like pure like album sales. But Night at the Opera has 11.5 million, which is still a ginormous still a number. And uh, I wanted to save this till after. So technically, these two are the biggest selling albums for both band, except Queen's greatest hits album is actually their best selling album. Ooh, wow. With 25 million. But I didn't think that counts for this contest because it's not an original album, it's a greatest hits. Yeah. Which- they better have a lot of sales. Yeah. Which goes so. back to my point that Zeppelin's more of an album band. And yes. It's like when I listen to Queen, I'm putting on the greatest yes. hits because I love all their hits, but yeah. not necessarily the whole albums. Yes, which is, hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. They also had a longer career to, to spread out all the songs, True. you know. And Zeppelin was just like, bam, bam, bam. Like, we're going to hit you with it, like, super fast. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting uh, thing, though. The greatest hits album is actually their best selling and had more than... Zeppelin 4, but again, it's a compilation. It's greatest hits. So, Zeppelin wins the better album category. Up next, the next two pointer, we're going to do the best song. And obviously, you know what songs we're going with. It's going to be Stairway mm. and Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. And this one is going to be very interesting. And this is going to be. Uh, Strictly opinion. I'm not doing this off of anything other than that. So you guys decide which song you think is the better song. And you can look at this however you want. You could go straight bias. Or if you want to get into, you know, originality, creativity, anything, however you want to look at it, just uh, tell me what you like about both songs, you know. Give me the good stuff. So uh, let's start with Al on this one. All right, so both are just, you can't even put words to how iconic both songs are, um, but I'm giving the edge to Stairway to Heaven just because I, I love that song a lot, and it speaks to me, and I just love that band in general, and I got chills just thinking about the ending, <laughs> you know, like just the lyrics, it just goes so hard, and... Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go with Stairway to Heaven, but Bohemian Rhapsody, like Banger. One of a one of a kind. Mm-hmm. Like definitely just super iconic and 
all the vocals and all like when you listen to Bohemian Rhapsody, it's like all the separate sections of the song, and it's almost like you're going to a whole show in one song. And there's something to be said about that. But I am being biased on this one. I'm going with Stairway. All right, Larry, <clears throat> what's your pick? Yeah, I mean bias. I would go Stairway, but I think that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is probably the bigger song. I mean, if you want to talk about like more popular song to just overall humanity, I would think that Bohemian Rhapsody. But if you want to talk about guitar, you know, or like then you want to break it down like that, then it's Stairway for the guitar riff and like the whole thing, you know. But I think it's more, it's more of a song you hear people, you would hear people singing that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody than you would Stairway to Heaven, like say out in public, like randomly. If that were to ever happen, the odds of you hearing. Bohemian Rhapsody, I feel, would be way stronger than hearing Stairway to Heaven. I agree with that. Yeah, right, you know? Yeah, I would think that, but I'm pretty sure that Stairway was the most played radio song for, like, years on American rock radio over anything else except for Freebird. That's amazing. Mm. So keep that in mind, you know? Yeah. That is the thing. I I feel where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. It is a huge song, but Stairway is also pretty big. It's also... I mean, Wayne's World, no Stairway, because all they did was play Stairway on the radio. Like, that's where that came from, man. Like, yeah. also a ginormous song, you know? But I feel you. Yeah, but it's bigger in a lot of different ways. I mean, it's bigger. It just depends, it, like, on different ways you're looking at it. Yeah. Like, Stairway is a bigger song, for sure. And you're, you're also comparing for a uh, band, the world for a band, yeah. versus, you know, our country. Right. There's well, a, exactly. two, a two big differences too, yeah. there. But, uh, all right. Well, looks like Stairway's getting the uh, the lead here. Frank, what's your take? So a lot of people would say that Bohemian Rhapsody is Queen's Stairway to Heaven. But I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven is their Bohemian Rhapsody. It just can't be. You know? It's literally the best rock and roll song ever created starts slow gets faster gradually faster there's not like a faster part stuff like that it just flows and flows and flows and builds and builds and builds until it just has to end yeah but i do love bohemian rhapsody oh, i was yeah. just singing it in the car on the way here it is a classic. full blast it's a great tune they're and both I, some of the Top greatest songs oh, of yeah. all time. I mean, like drunk, no at, drunk at a wedding. That. Yeah, you'll hear people singing yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, that's what, what I'm what, saying. Which, which is why yeah. I think Larry is talking about. You but know? at Guitar Center, you're gonna yeah. hear people say <laughs> it's gonna be Stairway. Yeah. You know, but yeah. That's thing too is, uh, I totally agree with you guys. I feel you on that. I probably lean towards Stairway myself, obviously. But I will say, with Bohemian Rhapsody. I think the reason you don't wouldn't hear someone playing at Guitar Center is because I would th- consider it a more complex and difficult song. Piano song. And that too. Stairway is relatively simple, which it doesn't matter versus complexity and simple. It doesn't make anything better, you know. Yeah. But just pointing that out, that that is a big part of that too, you know. And uh, I think with Bohemian, Rap- Bohemian, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, it, it is more of a fun song. Like, it's, it's very powerful, but it's more of a fun song, where Stairway is more of an emotional song. Dramatic. And I think that's what does it for us, I would say, if I could speak for everybody. There's more emotion in it. In the lyrics, there's more emotion in it. Bohemian Rhapsody has a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, and it's like, what does this mean? What's the Fandango? I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what are you talking about, guy? It's great. It's fun. It's awesome. It's killer. But at the end of the day, for me, I think that's where the... The divide is personally, you know, one has a little bit more emotion and feeling in it than the other one, which seems to be to me is just more of like a, uh, you know, a fun tune, you know. But and I feel like from a guitar player standpoint, like you have a ba- like you'd want to take a bat at playing Stairway before you would want to learn how to play Bohemian Rhapsody just yeah. because of the fact that it's not like 
it doesn't start out with the guitar like how's there like it's not capturing in the guitar i mean it is but not like off the cuff and throughout the whole song it has like a star power moment it's legendary like brian may has like a star power moment yep but it's not the song where stairway to heaven like to me the guitar the is the song yeah it's now so i have a couple more things i'll talk about with these songs so if a lot of people already know but if you don't the uh, recording, Bohemian Rhapsody, is considered, like, legendary. It was the most expensive song ever recorded at the time it was recorded. There's, like, over 100 vocal vocal tracks on it or something like that, vocals on it. Oh, wow. So that, it just deserves to be said and talked about because that's crazy. Like It is wild. If you, if, I'm sure you might remember something about it if you want to share. I'm pretty sure... They almost ran out. Like, at the time, you, you didn't have a DAW or anything. Like, you couldn't just do unlimited tracks. Like, I'm pretty sure they almost, I don't know, want to say almost canned it. Like, or the song almost didn't happen because they couldn't record it. That's what I heard. Yeah, I, I've heard that story. I'm not sure. Well, I was told that radio stations didn't want to play it because they didn't think it would be captivating for seven minutes or yeah. however long it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, a lot of radios definitely, they go for the short songs. It's easier for people to to digest, you know. Well, they were wrong. Yeah, they were but wrong. Stairway did, or uh, Zeppelin refused to make a radio edit of Stairway. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. And then the radio still played it. Yeah, and they did that with quite a few songs. There's actually a story about a whole lot of love being edited in the UK, and Paige heard it for the first time and absolutely hated it and never listened to it again and told them they can't do that. It's so. Hard. Which our next discussion is going to, our next question is going to get more into that. So I don't want to go too far in that direction. But my other thing that I found that was really cool at Stairway is that it is the biggest selling sheet music in all of rock and roll history. I could believe that, though. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. random crazy yeah, you, fact. You could play it on violin or cello yeah. or you could play it on whatever. So it's, it's still going to sound pretty. I think that I shows the impact of that song as well. Like I have the sheet music. I, don't even read, <laughs> I, I can't even read music. I, I, do, I do have it. I got yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, I thought that was crazy. <laughs> and not a lot of people buy sheet music in general. Like when you look at the numbers, you're like, that doesn't seem like a lot. And it makes you realize there's not tons of people out here buying sheet music anyway. But a select crowd. they still have the, uh, yeah, the biggest in rock music. Obviously, you know, probably some classical and stuff. Oh, yeah. as, but. As far as rock goes, the biggest. So I think that wraps up the song. Unless you got something. Are you good? We're good. All right. We're going with the Zep and the Stairway on that one. So the next one is going to be about the hits. We're talking number ones on Billboard, which is the American charts, which is what I'm going with because it's easiest for me. There are charts everywhere. There's small market charts. There's a bunch of stuff, but we're just going with Billboard. And so how I would like to do this is you take, have you guys take a guess, and then uh, we'll just go from there. I'll, I'll, I'll explain, and then we could talk, talk about it after. So if you had to take a guess, which band had the more number ones on Billboard? And if you'd like, guess how many as well. Let's go with uh, Frank first on this one. This is a tough one because I literally would not ever have any idea of yeah. these answers. I had no idea prior to looking it up. So, I mean, if I were to just take a guess, well, are we talking about like how many how many number ones they had, or how long they were at number one? Just how many reached number one? Oh man, If I were to just guess, I would probably say Zeppelin only because they were around earlier and they had more music out during a short period of time for them to have the capability of having more number ones. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, as far as having hits, I mean, Queen definitely has their fair share of hits. I mean, they have a lot of them. So if you have to choose... Are you going with the Zep? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go Queen. All right. Final answer. Final answer is Queen. Larry, who do you think has the more number one Billboard hit songs? 
I think probably I I don't know I don't know I have no idea but I would think that <laughs> Zeppelin probably had more number one hits but Queen had number one hits for way longer of a time yeah than like, like kind of like back to what you were saying with the time like the amount of time you know per hit whatever but yeah so I don't know that would be my thing so I would say as far as longevity Queen but more I would go Zeppelin. That's just my thought. I yeah. could be, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, you're taking a wild yeah. guess. That's my thought. I figured nobody would know this. That's yeah. why I went yeah. with it as a good question, you know. Al, what is your thought? To me, I'm going 110% queen. Well, 110% queen. They are, I would call them a crossover band. You know, they go into that pop, thing you know where it goes to a wider audience where zeppelin definitely did that too but i don't even think underground's a word but it's like they had their numbers in a very loyal fan base but i still think there are a few queen songs that more people know like you know under pressure and you mm-hmm. know another one bites dust and we will rock you it was yep. on the freaking toothbrushes and stuff yeah. back in the day <laughs> like yeah it's queen to me that's what i'm picking all right fair assessment so When I researched this, if I was guessing beforehand, I probably would have thought Zeppelin for the same reason Frank did, with the fact that they are around before, they put out a lot of big songs really fast, and I I was leaning towards that, and I was completely wrong. So here's the thing. Before I get into explaining it and we talk about this, Billboard, they do their charting based off of Plays and sales. Zeppelin never had a number one hit on Billboard because they didn't sell singles. Mm. Their singles were promotional only. So they didn't really give them a chance because they didn't want to. So they actually never had one. Fun fact. But a big part of that is they wanted people to buy the albums. And we all are aware that like the whole not wanting to make radio edits and stuff so, yeah, they never had a Billboard number one hit. Crazy. You would think they would have, yeah. but they actually didn't. I mean, they had songs that charted. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually that have. Makes sense. A whole lot of love did reach top ten. Yeah. That was their closest to a number one. So they were in there, you know, and I think it was later, though. It wasn't like when that came out. Um, and that's the same with uh, Queen. They had a lot that charted later on after the songs came out. Because you know how the random resurges happen and the yeah. song is used. Could be in a movie or like something. Like the Stranger Things that's going on, you know. The Master of Puppets, the Kate Bush. Like, she's number one on the charts. Song came out in the 80s. <laughs> What's Mix. going on, you know? Like, yeah. crazy. But um, Queen had two number one hits. That's it? They had two. <laughs> yeah. It's you crazy. Suck, you no? the, the number it just shows one. You. But here's the thing is, though, you go to, like, UK charts, you're talking, like, six there. Yeah. This is, it's a different uh, situation and stuff, but I'm going with this because it's American. This is where we're at. Yep. It just makes more sense. It's easiest for us. And, like, they're small markets. So, like, granted, both bands had number one hit songs. So we're talking Billboard. It's the, the Hot 100, I think it's called, or something yeah. like that. The... Uh, Queen had two. Do you guys have any guesses of what the two songs are? If you had to guess. Are we going to go around or just... Yeah, let's start with you. Two number one songs? Yep. Um, Under Pressure and We Are the Champions. All right. Al, what do you think? Uh... I would go We Are the Champions and I think I might go with I think we might go with We Will Rock You. All right. Well, double banger there. Yeah. I'm going to go with Under Pressure and Another One Bites the Dust. All righty. Great guesses. All stuff I would have guessed myself. 
particularly huge songs, great songs. The two were Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Oh. And another one bites the dust. Ooh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Half right. Yeah. Frank was the only one that got anyone anything right. Yeah. Yeah. And what's crazy to me about that is that wow. these were later songs in their career. Yeah. Post Bohemian, you know. I think nineteen eighty is when they both came out. I so didn't right around even there. think about little thing little yeah. crazy little thing called love. That's yeah. wow. That just shows you can have the greatest song in the world. Mm. It doesn't you know, it doesn't matter. No. You know. Yeah, and you know, these <laughs> these stats they don't really matter at the end of the day. Yeah. But I think it's a great discussion. True. And it's just cool to know, you know. I mean, Billboard has talked cool. about so much. Like, in the music world, people talk about the Billboard charts all the time. For so like, long. A lot of people For are time. like, what, what even is this? So, so like, yeah. if you didn't know, now now you know they do it by the album sales and play. But, um, you know, everything is different nowadays, too, because they do involve streaming yeah. and downloads. But, like... Back in this era, we're talking radio play and album sales and stuff, you know. So that's where it comes from. And, uh, yeah, so Queen's going to get the, the points on that one. We got our uh, last two-pointer up next. Completely opinion-based. I already know where this is going. Which band was the, the better live band? Al started off. What do you think? Better live band. I mean, Queen had some really iconic concerts that are really famous, but I'm 110% going Led Zeppelin. Just sheer, you know, when they went out, man, they were going for freaking battle, and nothing was ever played the same every show. And I, I, from obviously, like we weren't around at that time. From what I hear, it's like when you saw Zeppelin. You saw it, and it was special for you and at that night, and they you never knew what they were going to do, and a lot of it was improv, and, you know, Queen had that big, like, large-in-life stage presence, but I like something more about, like, Zeppelin could be at Madison Square Garden on huge stage, and they're still all huddled up together, and it's, you know, that intimate chemistry, and it's just more powerful to me. So I'm going Zeppelin. All right. Frank, what are you thinking on live band? Both great live. I was honestly very surprised to hear, again, going back to Brian May's guitar tone, to hear his guitar played live sounding almost identical to his studio guitar, mm -hmm. which is just impressive in my opinion because, you, you know, usually the studio stuff yeah. is, so, is so intricate, you know, to the song type deal. But... I mean, Zeppelin is just a whole different entity. Yeah. You know, it's raw cosmic energy. Everyone goes bash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend you watch some live footage of the Zep. Song remains <laughs> the same. Yep. You know, they literally have a movie dedicated to their lives on and off the road. Mm -hmm. Who they think they are and who they were. Yeah. It's craziness, man. Great, great stuff. Larry? Okay. Better live show. I think Queen was, like, more of, like, the arena. Like, I don't know. I feel like when you see, like, those videos of Freddie Mercury just, like, captivating an entire sea of people, like, singing after him. Zeppelin was doing that stuff, too. A lot of the call and response with the audience and with the crowd and, like, really captivating the people that are listening to you in the live experience. And they both have that down, like, so well. And they could really engage. That gives you, like, the extra two cents. Like, it's not, you know, that the reason you're there is to get more than just hearing it in your room. Like, that's why you go and they they give you that they give you that frosting, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, like, that's what you want. And they both, they're both so good at it. But, I mean, again, just, I love Led Zeppelin. They're, you know, one of my favorites, my favorite. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would go Zeppelin. But if anybody went Queen, like, I would get it, you know. Oh, I totally. I would go Zeppelin. But they're yeah. both so good. And, like, getting all those vocal harmonies down and, like, doing that live, like, 
just pulling that off with the loud music and like the loud, you know, and the huge arenas, everyone's screaming, everyone's singing perfect pitch harmonies, like microphones are all perfect, everything's all straight and like squared away. Like that's that's something. That's work. Like they're working. Oh, definitely. And they're making it happen. And it's all and they they were great at it. So, but I'll go Led Zeppelin. All right. Well, Zeppelin's gonna take that one for sure. Um, I would just like to say that, in my opinion, I think that if you're talking for, like, the musical aspect and putting together a musical experience, you're going to have Zeppelin winning all day. But I think, as Larry was kind of getting at, if you're talking about a captivating performance that entertains the crowd... I think Freddie is possibly the greatest frontman of all time when it comes to that. So it's a really like opinion based thing, yeah. like what you you know what I mean. It's like if you're up. not a musician, I see why you would want to see Queen over Zeppelin. You know what I mean? Like I'm never gonna be like no. Like I would get it, you know. But I think you know at the end of the day, we're all huge Zeppelin fans, so they win this one in, in our hearts. But. No disrespect on the uh, the Queen live show, man. Freddie was insane. Their whole band was great. Tight. Just, yeah, tight. They played their songs that killed it. I don't know if you ever seen. They have a show from 1975, and they did a medley starting with Bohemian Rhapsody. They went to, like, I think three or four songs and then finished with the end of Bohemian Rhapsody, and that is really good. I know I've seen that from them, and it was amazing. So they also did put on great musical shows and, like, really were creative with it as well. But just seeing what I've seen from Live Zeppelin, it's it's I don't think many bands did what they were able to do and take things where they were able to take it. Um, both bands have a killer dynamic with their live show. They know how to bring it down completely and bring it all the way up. I think that's something that makes them both amazing live bands like a band that can really capture dynamic and it's not just stale Blaring. and bland and it's not just too over the top the whole time like if you can really get that it'll really get the crowd going you know really make them feel something so yeah Zep's going to get the uh, final two pointer there we're going to move on to the three point questions we're almost finished there's only two of these first one's easy I'm not even going to ask you guys because this, you know, these questions are going to be for every episode. Some episodes, it's going to be easier than others. This first three pointer is which band has more influence on our band? Arbor Creek. Clearly, final answer Led Zeppelin <laughs> is the more influential band on our band. Final answer. You guys already all know that. So they're going to get the first three pointer. And the second three-point question is going to be, which band had the, the most musical impact on music as a whole, like after their existence from, you know, the moment they started? Which band do you think impacted music overall, as in influencing future bands, influencing any aspect of music or music business or anything, anything you could think of? Which one do you think had more musical impact and let's start it with Larry this time. Musical impact to musicians. I mean, depending on, I guess, depending really, but I would say in the music, like the eye of a musician, you would probably think Led Zeppelin, but in the eye of just anybody, like more impact. Like I think of my aunt. My aunt has You're My Best Friend from Queen. That's her wedding song. So that to her impact, like there's impact in that way for those for different people that Queen might hit more than Led Zeppelin would. You know what I mean? Maybe not. I mean, that really just depends on the person. But, of course, as far as, like, impact, I mean, it's, as, I mean, for me, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe, I would just go, I would say Queen. Because, of like, you had, they had more number one songs, like you said. And just, like, thinking about it's it. Bigger like overall. More, bigger overall. Like, yeah, so you a, might have more, that's more a fair people way to impacting look at it. From that song. From That's totally Queen. fair. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of this is all just perspective-based, yeah. the way you're I'll looking at Queen. it. So I'll take uh, In that light, Queen. Queen's getting the first vote here. Al, 
Which band had more musical impact? Well, I agree with Larry in some aspects where I feel like musical impact on the regular old masses, I would say maybe Queen because they have that crossover success. But if you're talking an impact on music, I mean, I'm going with Led Zeppelin for the sheer musicianship. I feel like a lot more musicians, I might be just speaking out of my ass, but I feel like a lot of musicians are really heavily influenced by, you know, say like, I feel like most people's favorite drummer, if they play drums, is John Bonham. Not to be like that. That's just how I feel. Um, Fair. So, and also recording quality and all of that. They did such innovative stuff and used techniques that people still use today. So I'm going Zeppelin. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Frank? So short answer would be Zeppelin. But the reason for me would not be Zeppelin, the band themselves, but it would be their manager, Peter Grant. Mm, yeah. He changed the game in the music business. This is true. So like the way they had their deal worked out, each of them got 20%. There was five members, you know, of their little unit. But Peter Grant was kind of like the fifth member of Zeppelin. Yeah. So whenever Zeppelin got paid, he got 20% of that profit. So he changed the game when it came to playing shows in arenas, he got the band paid. He is the one who literally invented the 90-10 split with the venue that carried on since then. Like, that's just what it was. That's what they did for the music industry, for yeah. other bands, not just themselves, for everybody. Yep. He's also the one that led the charge on the no singles thing. No singles? Fun fact. Yep. You know, I had, I had no idea. I mean, oh, yeah. and honestly, there's so many stories, like, especially, like, I don't know, a big stories like Black Sabbath, like, they got robbed blind. Yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't make as way as much money as they yeah. should have. In the early years. So, yeah, I mean, on the music industry, yeah, that takes the cake, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and bands weren't even moving like that at that size and that with that kind of momentum at that time, like, ever before. Like, even Elvis and the Beatles, the Beatles stopped before it even got to be that big. Granted, it was insanely huge. Yeah, but, but Zeppelin about continued touring, and got momentum, and, it was, and and Peter Grant was really riding the bull all the way through. Like he was scary. Yeah, oh, yeah. people don't want him to fuck guy. with him. He was a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, bodyguard. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> he was a lot of things. Yeah, he was pretty much shout out Peter Grant. He was always strapped too. I'm pretty sure, right? Yep. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. A lot of stories. They got into a lot that. of fights. Oh, yeah. There's a famous one in Boston. They almost killed a guy. Now, was he a collegian wrestler or was he a kayfabe wrestler? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, serious question. I don't know like, if you guys know. I think he was a, like not, Olympic, not a like Olympic wrestler. Okay. Not like so, a, Kurt Angle. Yeah, yeah. like okay. wrestler, yeah. Amateur wrestling. Sport wrestling, as they call it. He was a not, big guy. Not like pro wrestling, WWE wrestling. Like, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Zeppelin's going to get the other three points. They're going to take that uh, musical impact category there. I will just say that, uh, t I mean, it's a complete toss-up. Because, like, musical impact, when I think of, like, in the category of rock music, Zeppelin is the bigger impactful band on future bands, on everything. I mean, I think there's a lot of 70s rock bands that tried to do a lot of what Zeppelin did. Yep. A lot. You hear it in vocals, you hear it in guitar, you hear it in drums, you hear it in everything. And I think that's a big thing. And as you said before, even with the, the stuff that came in the 80s that they started doing in the 70s. And uh, with Queen, I don't see that as much. I do see they were very influential on a lot of pop artists and singers because of Freddie and stuff like that. But I think that Queen was more chasing, trying to fit the times where Zeppelin was almost leading the charge on that. Oh, most Because, like, Another One Bites the Dust and stuff like that, if you ever watched the movie that came out, they kind of talked about it in there that, like, that was a purposeful, like, they wanted to make a song that was fitting, like, the new times and, like, could be played at, like, the club, like a dance thing. And it was, like, I feel like they were more trying to go with the times. And they weren't necessarily leading the times. So I feel like Zeppelin gets more of the, the impact in my book on that. I like that. And, um... Not to say that they're not both super influential on tons of people. You know, that's clearly 
clearly a thing there. I mean, Zeppelin was just the biggest, they were the biggest band of the 70s. They were what the Beatles were in the 60s. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much what that is. They were uh, really, really doing it, and we love them. And uh, well, that wraps up the uh, three-point round. So now, I think the most exciting part, we're going to go into the bonus round. This is where things are going to get a little crazy, you know? <laughs> so the bonus round is going to be complete free-for-all. Any randomness, any cool fun fact, anything you want to give points to either artist for, you can give them points, and you can tell me how many points. Please keep it not insane, you know? <laughs> Three points was the most, so don't be going, like, ten and up. But let's keep it between, like, one and five. How about that? Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So uh, let's start with Larry. Do you got any cool bonus points or reasons why you'd want to give either one some extra help in the battle of the Supreme? Um... Can I do both? Can I give both? Oh, yeah, to both? you can do both for sure. Yeah, I'll, you said between one and five. I'll give, uh, I mean, I'll give three points to Queen just on their vocal harmony as a band. All right. Being, all right. And then I would give three points to Led Zeppelin because of John Paul Jones. All right. All right. That sounds good to me. I can I can see why you're giving the bonus there. Al, what do you got for bonuses? Bonuses. Now, am I supposed to give bonuses to both, or do I just do one? Whatever you prefer to do. Okay. It's a free-for-all. Honestly, I'm not going to get crazy with the points. I'm giving one band points. I'm giving Led Zeppelin two points because they partied harder. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you think of rock and roll, that's I like destroying you, hotels. Yeah, you dude, you ever read one of the books? It was made by one of their like assistant touring managers, Richard Cole. A lot ever, of crazy stuff, dude. Dude, yeah, I didn't want to talk about it. Some stuff would be illegal nowadays, but they <laughs> oh, yeah. they partied hard and they were a rock and roll. I band. mean, Bonham died from drinking too much essentially at the end of the day so i mean that's as rock and roll as it gets really right there yeah and we're not condoning any of that obviously don't od or yeah. throw up in your sleep or whatever but <laughs> but points granted no yeah. it's, it's, dude they're respect ro- you know <laughs> they're rock and roll dude that that that's it two points Zeppelin. all right frank what do you got for some bonuses here all right so i'm gonna give one point to each band all just right. for being a fire band from england I like I like that. That's yeah, that's worthy. But then I'm gonna give an extra point to Zeppelin, strictly John Bonham, because after, during and after their 1975 tour and all the tours preceding that tour, he made all of his drum techs dress up to whatever he wanted. So he would have them dress up <laughs> like the people from uh, Clockwork Orange, <laughs> or he'd so have crazy. them dress up in certain. You know, certain things for certain shows, just like Al said, like they partied. They yeah. like to have fun. Have a fun time. You know? So three points for that. All right. I'm cool with that. I'm uh, I'm going to toss out some bonus points here myself. Ooh. So I'll start with the Zeppelin. I'm, I'm giving two for each side here. I went crazy with it. First is when we touched on plant recording presence in a wheelchair i could never record sitting down i don't like singing sitting down i definitely couldn't do a whole album and do what he did sitting down in a wheelchair injured that is i think that is totally worthy of points so i'm just gonna add i'm just gonna do one points for mine but yeah my second zeppelin one they had a whole ass plane (laughs) they with How an organ in it. That? They had a whole plane with an organ in it. Fireplace. The, the, yeah, like, what? Again, rock and roll. Like, how much more rock and roll does it get than having your own jet? You know what I mean? Like, absolutely insane. So I got to give them bonus points there, you know? It's just, that's. I mean, that's cool. I would bonus love to points do. for the plane, most definitely. Yeah, totally worthy. I mean, the, the picture, the famous picture. I used oh, yeah. to have the poster on my Yeah, dude, like... That's come on. That's legendary. That's definitely bonus point worthy. 
Not to mention, uh, I was going to do the double neck guitar thing because I thought Larry was going to do it, but he didn't do it. But we're going to throw it out there. The double neck guitar could deserve a point. I don't think it matters at this point because I'm looking at the points here and I don't think it's going to make a difference for anything. But I got two for Queen. First one is going to be the Red Special guitar because Brian May built that with his dad in the early 60s, and I think that is awesome that yeah. it's a completely his own guitar. It's his guitar. Him and his dad built it, and that's super, super cool. And if you didn't know that, mad props. It's a great guitar. It's super cool. It's got such a distinct sound and tone, and I think that definitely deserves a little bonus point action for them. And my final bonus point is going to be that they did a song with David Bowie because that's just badass. Yep. I mean, totally agree. That's just awesome that they were capable. And if anyone hasn't heard the story, I'll just do a quick rundown of from my memory and understanding. But um, Queen or Bowie, one of them was recording in a studio somewhere, and they crossed paths, and they just started jamming. Like, members were just jamming and stuff, and they were playing other people's tunes, like covering, like how we would, just jamming, yeah, yeah. you know? And uh, David Bowie like got to the point where he's like, this is dumb. Let's just make a song. <laughs> like, like, why are we playing all these other people's songs? Let's just make one. We're all together. And they started with like a backing track yeah, or something like that that was like already pre-recorded. And then uh, or they started laying it down and made a backing track. And uh, they did this thing where they all went in the vocal booth, like multiple people, and sang how they thought the vocals should go. And then they made all the vocals based on all these different ideas that all the people had oh, that's and kind of created the song. So... The Bowie song definitely gets them a point. I think it's really, really cool. And that's going to be my last bonus point. I want to give one more bonus point to Queen for Freddie Mercury's mustache. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's one of the best stashes. Worthy of a point. One of the best. Definitely worthy of a point. He had great style, you know. Yes. Knew how to dress, you know. So, um... Any other things you guys want to throw in there? Or are we good? I mean, I got the final score here in front of me, so... I mean, it's pretty clear. If anyone's we're good. listening, I think we all know who the winner is here. Yeah. Sorry, Queen. No disrespect. No disrespect. All love. It's we all love. Do. It's we all do love. love you. It's if you're a Queen love. fan, like huge fanatic, we apologize for the bias, <laughs> but this is just how we feel, man. You know? We do we do really enjoy both bands and they're both legendary. But uh final score, Zeppelin's taking home twenty five points and Queen with the 13. So big, big difference here. It was a landslide, if you ask me. Honestly, what really did it, it would be a lot closer if it weren't for Zeppelin getting the best album and best song. Because mm. those were both two points, and they got both of those, and I feel like that really helped. But we also did do pretty much all of Zeppelin as far as in the individual musicians went besides Freddie. So. Yeah. Right. You know, but Freddie is is the guy. So I mean, it's 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 hard with them. Like you said, they're more of a unit based around Freddie. Where Zeppelin, I feel like you remove a member and you're changing the entire dynamic of the band. So at least that's how I feel. You know. But yeah, any uh, last things anybody wants to say about the uh, the two or anything? I just want to add this shout out if you listen to the show. I believe. When one Dominic Vaya hears the score, he's going to roll his eyes and be like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Larry and I's cousin and all of our buddy Dominic. Yeah. And Dan. We got to throw and Dan, Dan in. And Marty. And there Marty. Was, there was yeah, some... Dan, Marty, and Dom, our, our homeboys, deal with it. Just deal with it. The Queen tribe. We yeah. love you guys. We love Queen too, but just deal with it. You, you guys know? know the truth deep down. So, Another yeah. badass thing that could have been an extra point, hmm. but I didn't even bring it up because obviously, you know, we know what's going to happen. But Zeppelin convinced Atlantic to give them their own branch and record label. And that's actually where they got the plane from. It was a gift from Atlantic. Oh, damn. Yeah, crazy. They didn't even have to pay for it. No. And then they got their own hey, label, here's a Swan plane. Song. And they started, yes. the, the first band they signed to Swan Song label was Bad Company. Bad Company. 
Sick. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the first episode here of the Battle Supreme. If you enjoyed pilot episode one, make sure you follow the podcast. Leave a rating review. If you leave a nice review, which we hope you do, maybe we'll give you a shout out on future episodes. Yes. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms and you heard check us out at arborcreektheband.com. That's arborcreektheband.com. Yes. You heard right. You heard it here. Is that takes the Thank you guys. For your legacy in the battle, Supreme. <laughs>